It is truly an honor to have the queen of hip hop soul here with us today. Please welcome the one, the only Mary J. for you because I know oh you deserve all of this Thank you, you and, 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 and whew, I'm crying and we just starting <laughs> listen the last time um, we were together was Essence Festival 2017 and you were so raw and honest during our conversation um, you'd said you'd gone through so much in your life at that time you'd been fighting for your marriage you discovered your strength and it was your reset moment for you could you have imagined all of the wonderful things after that that were to come, from 2017 to now? I mean, I had no idea. Um, I wasn't, you know, counting on it or hoping. I just was trying to get through my life and get through those trials. And, you know, I was in the, when I so, saw you, I was in smack dab in the middle of a huge divorce, which is like a heavy thing, and that's like a death, you know? And, um, I was just moving forward, you know, and moving forward. And as I was moving forward and trying to be, you know, trying to do the right thing, God was just opening up the sky on me. Like, you know, the, the, the Oscar nominations came yeah. in the middle of the hell. Yeah. I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, I just kept moving and, and, and I didn't get bitter. I, you know, I was upset. Yeah. You know, I just let God take the wheel and, and do his thing because if I had did, I'm done anything, it would have been a disaster. No, and that's what <clears> I loved about that moment. You were not bitter. You were very resolute and certain that you had done everything you needed to do yeah. and you were looking forward. And I loved that at the time and I love it now. Thank so you. congratulations on that because Thank it's you. hard. Oh, it's very hard. Listen. Yeah. The high road is not an easy road to travel. And you traveled it and look at where you are. When you walked out, I couldn't help but think, you know, you have this crown of the queen of hip hop soul, and yet you walk out still so shy. You know, the crowd here is going crazy. And I'm like, the queen of hip hop soul. And you're like, is that me? Somebody behind me? <laughs> have you grabbed the crown and put it on yet? I or are you just still looking at it in the case? I mean, I have it on, you know. Um, it, it's. it's I I, I, I don't know how to be cocky and, you know, I don't know how to be arrogant, you know. I just know how to be sure. Yeah. I'm sure of who I am right oh. now. That's really it. Yeah. Um, in May, you had the honor of being inducted in the Apollo Theater Walk of Fame. And I always think about, I mean, it's a huge moment, but I always think about artists, especially those from New York, Jay-Z, Alicia Keys, when you're now that kid still in your heart, but you're walking along the Apollo, a place where you weren't even the headliner, right. and now you're in the Hall of Fame. It's a blessing. I mean, this... Thank you. Thank you. Um, this Mary J. Blige business has been a blessing. This whole <laughs> journey is a blessing. I, I didn't expect any of this. When I was growing up, I didn't expect to even make it this far in my life. I thought I'd be dead in 1994, you know, during the My Life album. You've seen the documentary. Yeah. You saw how I felt about my life, myself. So I, I had no idea, but what what was a, what was what ha helped me to move forward and progress is when the four million fans bought the album. I said, well, if I check out, then I'm gonna take probably uh, some of those people with me. And I yeah. always had a thing for people where I love people more than I love myself. That yeah. was always how I felt. But you know, I, I don't know and how that, I did that. I mean, and that's the thing. You talk about the documentary Mary J. Blige, My Life. I've watched it over and over again, and that is also something that struck me. Very early on in your career, even though you were going through your struggles and they were enormous, you thought about other people. And if I give up on myself, they might give up on themselves. Yeah. Where did you get that from? Where did you get that spirit from? I, I guess it comes from um, survival, just living in, in, in the inner cities and the projects. And I just was always a little girl that cared, and my mother will tell you this, they cared about 
everybody more than I cared about. Just, I just wanted everybody to have something. I wanted everybody to be happy in the projects because, you know, if they're happy, then they'll leave you alone. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So right. I just if want everybody happy, to have something. <laughs> yeah, I just want everybody to have something. Yeah. I, I just like to see people have stuff. You know, was it a relief to finally get that documentary done and get all of that off your chest and for people to see what it took to make that epic album? It was. It was. Um, it was a lot of tears. Yeah. You know, that, that album is so full of just moments that were dark for me. But every time I speak to a fan, they'll say, well, it, it helped me to get married or it helped get me get out of a bad marriage or it took me through college. But for me, it was like, oh, man, I just want to die. Oh. So it's so many, so many tears and I wanted to be loved, you know, by this man and I wanted to, and I didn't love myself and I didn't know where the love was supposed to come from. So it was just heavy, man. Every song was, please love me, please, please help me, please, 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 please. <laughs> and, and I hate to say it like that, but that's, that's what it feels like. That's what it felt like. And now when I listen to it, I, I have tears of joy because I lived through that. I made it. It's, yeah. you know, my fans and I lived yeah. through it. And I think that's, that's the beauty in it, and that's what makes it a work of art, is that at that time, that art was your life. Yes. But with you and with your fans, which include me, we've all evolved. Yes. And through that art, listening to it now, it does feel a bit different. It's, it's triumphant now. Yes. Because yes. We, we outlived it. We, we lived. We lived. <laughs> yeah. You know, this was a time when a, a lot of my female fans were just depressed and mm -hmm. doing anything to get through it. We was doing anything to right. get through it because we've never experienced no pain. I mean, I've experienced pain since I was, since childhood. But when you get older and that pain comes with you, it's like, oh, man, please, somebody show me how to get out of this and get yeah. rid of it. And the only person that can help you get out of it is you and God. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time I was watching the documentary, I was wondering to myself, would you have gotten out of that space were it not for music? So I, I kind of visualize, like, what is a different version of Mary J. Blige? What, what is Mary J. if the music wasn't there? there would be no Mary J. That music, ever since I was a child, it, you know, I have goosebumps right now. It's what I did. I sang to feel better. I sang to feel free. I sang so I wouldn't feel or hope we was living in, hope that we was living in a different environment. Yeah. I sang to release myself from, you know, where we were. Yeah. So it, it, if it was no music, there'd be no Mary J. Blige. God used music as a vehicle to save, to help save my life, to help save my family's life. Well, you know, I think about, obviously, the past music, and I know the present is as relevant, and the overwhelming question from people is, what are we going to see next? When is the new album? Yeah. What is the new voice? What, where are you right now? Man, let me explain something. <laughs> Man. I, 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 like I said, I'm sure. I'm not cocky, I'm not arrogant but I earned the right to say some things. I learned the right to say, I feel amazing. Yeah. 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 I feel amazing. And I love that moment because people feel free around you. Mm -hmm. And I feel that energy. Whenever I see you, I just feel like I could consume every word and I can be myself. But in this space of creating a new album, are you able to be yourself now to do the next stage? 100%, because what the reason why I say I feel amazing is not because every day is a great day and I always wake up feeling, you know, like this, <laughs> hair and makeup. It's because when I wake up with no hair and makeup, I'm accepting that chick that goes to the bathroom. Right. With, with just like, and I like her. I hang out with myself a lot. I'm my yeah. own best friend. Yeah. I got me, she got, we got each yeah. other. And, and, and that's why it's, it's cool. That's so why would I, the next album be I'm My Best Friend? Like, what... what I, it... I can't tell you can't tell me. <laughs> you fishing. I'm gonna I'm a get you. Listen, I'm but fishing. wait till you hear it. It's gonna blow everybody's mind. And, and, and it's <sighs> because it's something I had to do and something I had to say when I was in my darkest, darkest moments in, you know, mm -hmm. that life mm -hmm. to build myself up to, the, to this person that I can see and accept my nose, accept my eyes, accept my cheeks, accept all the things that I used to be like, oh, I hate my cheekbones, I hate my nose, I look like this. Like that. I can accept it all. You celebrated your 50th birthday, you posted. I, I screamed when I saw the bikini pictures and all the fun. There you are, Mary at 50. Um, why did you decide to mark that moment with these pictures that are stunning, by the way? Because I have, I, I, I've just been behind, I've just been, 
it seems like I've been a, in a shadow and closed off and not like um, enjoying the fruits of my labor. You know, I train. You know, and you know this is the fruits of my labor. You know, and I. So and, you've been working out. Right, were you, did you do the countdown to fifty workout? No, I just was. I that was just old muscle tone. That's just. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I, I do this, you know. I've been doing it for a while. Yes, um, I'm working out and stuff How often like do you work out? Um, three days out of a week. And um, I've been doing it since I was 26, you know, and I never gave up. Like, when I was going through all that hell, I didn't stop. I just, I just kept working out even more. A lot of then. people like to work out because they say it resets them. It's like therapy. You go in and it's just kind of the endorphins and you feel good. Yeah. Is that that feeling you have? Yeah, I, I felt... Yeah, I felt great. That day, I felt amazing. And I, and I was always shy, like, oh, I don't want to show. I said, ah. You know, that's how I feel right now, like, ah. So you did the, wait ah. a minute, ah. <laughs> <laughs> And when you looked at the picture, did you say, okay? I was like, ooh. <laughs> wait, Ma, you like love songs now? What, that's because your anniversary? Yeah. Yep, 22 years. Your father held me down when nobody else did. He had my back. And I see you itching to get out there, but when it's your time, having a lover makes you weak. But having a partner makes you strong. Remember that. <laughs> I saw you get caught up in your own scene. I was just looking. <laughs> you know how you look in to see, you know... What did you... you see there? What did I see? Yeah, I, in I, that I, performance. I saw a mother trying to help her daughter not make the same mistakes that, you know, she would make or that she made or ho hope her daughter doesn't make the same mistakes or follow in her footsteps. Yeah. What a powerful matriarch, a powerful character. Why do you understand her? I understand her because I grew up around her in the inner cities, in the projects. That woman was everywhere. That's the woman, you know, that I got a lot of my fashion sense from, the, the queen pin. Yeah. <laughs> they had everything. They had furs, they had cars, they had, you know, they were the females that had to, but they weren't just doing it for vanity. They were doing it to raise their children. They were single parent mothers. Right. So they, they had to hustle and they, they didn't want to, I don't think they wanted to do it at first, yeah. but they did what they needed to do to uh, take care of their children. Right. Just like my mom, my mom was a single parent mother in that uh, environment. And um, she did what she had to do, to do to take care of her two children. So I'm, I was surrounded by those women and still am. Like, yeah. some of them are still my friends living today, those, you know, Monet's well, in my life. And, and, and to your point about her, she has to have that bravado that doesn't allow misogyny to dominate her in this world of men yeah. who are making moves. She can't show fear. She can't yeah. show any of those things. Yeah, that's kind of like me, in a yeah, sense. You it know, is. In this music business and, and just in, in life, period, growing up without a father figure mm -hmm. and having to be this woman surrounded by men in the, in the music business and, and know how to work and not get all, you know, entangled. Right. You know? Just work with them and, and, um, and, and not let them intimidate me. Yeah. And that's, that's me now.